If you're a solo twin user, it's useful to think about the user guide. The questions that are answered are really how do I get best value from my solo twin and what about maintenance, holidays and power cuts. Let's look at the start of getting best value. Obviously there's issues about getting good insulation, getting good energy yield, timing your hot water use appropriately if you can and controlling the temperature of your backup water heating. Not just the temperature but adjusting its timing as well. Because if you give the panel cool incoming water, it'll work best. What about insulation? Well, the cylinder should have 60 mm of insulation for a grant, and it's a good idea, and a slip-on jacket only costs you £10. But don't insulate the immersion cables for safety reasons. Your hot pipes, like those, especially the vent pipe, all the way up and round the corner in the loft. All the pipes between the cylinder and the hot taps, they should be at least as thick as the pipe it covers, and should run at least a metre from the cylinder. Insulation is cost-effective and easy to fit. The benefits of that can come close to having a solar panel fitted. So what actually heats up the panel? Because if you know this, you can know how to make it work. It's radiation from the sun, which is a mixture of visible and infrared light, slightly more visible. It's the radiation, not the hot air, that does most of the heating, because the panel is highly insulated, so the air temperature doesn't contribute much. And remember that our eyes see light logarithmically, so what we think of light as being half as bright is actually about ten times dimmer. Check it with a light meter if you like. So what boosts energy yield? When you'll get a greater yield when there's more sun. And when the panel casts a big shadow, because thereby it therefore it's intercepting more light. You get less energy when the, sun, the panel is cooled by evaporation or wind, just a bit less, and a bit less if it heats up compared to outside. So you get the most yields when you've got no clouds, the sun is square onto the panel, and the weather is dry and still, still although that's not a big influence. And the temperature of the water in the panel is close to the air's outside. This last point means that all solar panels work most efficiently on cool incoming water, so try to keep the bottom of the cylinder cool by letting cool water go in by using hot water at the top. Timing hot water use. Some people can use hot water by day, putting the washing machine on or the dishwasher at lunch if they're hot fill. That refills the bottom of the cylinder with cool as I've mentioned. If you use the hot water immediately it's collected, it won't leak out. All thermal insulation, no matter how expensive and how good, is less than 100% efficient. So, can you use more hot water on days when it's particularly sunny? Not everybody can. It's a sort of solar lifestyle thing. Looking at your backup heating, make sure that Solar Twin delivers the most energy. Your thermostat is best set at 60 degrees. Lower temperatures can be a legionella risk and higher temperatures can increase the heat leakage losses. If your airing cupboard is at 20 degrees and your cylinder is at 60, you've got 40 degrees of, heat dif of temperature difference driving the heat loss. If you're thermostat is set at 70, you've got 50 degrees driving the loss. That's 25% more. Bit of mental arithmetic there. So look at the thermostat, but also look at the timing of your backup heating. This is crucial. Default timing for most programmers is on in the morning and the evening, or um, all the way through, or all the morning, all the way through to the evening, which is very wasteful, or two or three times a day, like morning and evening, sometimes a chunk at lunch. But these start the day with lots of hot water in the cylinder, and solar panels are there to heat water when the sun shines. If the water's already hot, they can't do much. So try having the morning slug of heat just a little bit in winter, um, and and a little bit and a decent amount of evening heating. But in the summer, just having evening heating on. Most users will add backup heating to 60 degrees C in the in the evening. It won't always be needed because the water may be over that. Sometimes in the summer, the water will go between 60 and 85 degrees then your heating won't come on even if the timer says it does. But do heat the water to 60 for an hour once a day. That way, whether you've got solar or not, your Legionella risks are limited. The next bit is to look at low maintenance. It's very low. It's inspection, hardness control. You don't need cleaning, it's self-regulating. It doesn't need power cuts and it's portable when moving house. Let's look at these in detail. You should look at the panel inside, the, all of the solar system, panel, plumbing, pipes and so on, um, inside and outside, a day and a week after installation, but also after holiday, installation, sorry, <laughs> and also after holidays, storms and plumbing changes. And you should do the pump pipe pinch test. This is pinch the white silicone pipe on the way into the pump and the way out. The note should change when the system is running. You need to do your hardest control, as described, and do that rigorously. Cleaning. Well, the rain usually takes the bird droppings off the PV. The internal pipes you should flush out professionally every six to seven years, and the main panel's glazing is rarely 
safer worthwhile to clean because steeper than 15 degrees it's largely self-cleaning. Going on holiday? Never switch off the pump. You can switch off your backup heating but if you do um, and you can leave the airing cupboard's um, door open to let a little bit of warmth into the house to keep the damp off but you don't need neighbours in for bath parties. But always, whether you've got solar or not, heat water to 60 degrees for an hour before using your hot water on your return to kill any Legionella bugs that have been hanging around in your cylinder. Solar twin is self-raising and self-regulating and it can stabilise at up to 60 85 Celsius in the summer. If there's a mains power cut, it doesn't matter because solar twin is off-grid. It just works as normal. It's got no controller box, so it doesn't need reprogramming after the power cut is open. It doesn't boil during a mains power cut. If you're moving house, well, most people stay about seven years before they move house in the UK, and you can just disconnect it if you move and put it in the van, because the warranty is, is portable across up to three homes, in other words, two movings of house. Thanks for thinking about Solar Twin, and I hope you enjoy it. It's Barry from Solar Twin. Bye-bye.